So hello and welcome back to Technical. Today, I got the HP Pavilion Aero 13. Let's take a look at it. I wanna get the specs out of the way first because it's an amazing highlight uh, for this laptop. This has an AMD Ryzen 5600 25U. So yeah, a really, really good processor with a base core clock frequency of two gigahertz. Um, if you're international, AKA any other, you know, buyer outside of Canada, because I'm Canadian, you will get the AMD Ryzen 5 5600U. So it's not as new as the new 5625U, but it is more powerful. Um, unfortunately, because of thermals and stuff, because things like one kilogram, under oh, yeah. oh, yeah. oh, yeah. um, AKA you're getting into a uh, LG gram spec, but the reason that it's not as powerful as the advertised chip is because of thermals, right? Um, the thing is that they didn't want to get this too warm, meaning that they had to like lower performance in order for thermals to be, you know, like really low. And I think that's like, a, that could be a pro or a con for you. If you're really into that performance, um, then sorry, this isn't for you. But if you want something quiet and cool, this is totally for you. And I think this is what they were going for. They were going for the business person and the student. So I think they did a great job here. This has an AMD uh, SOC, so just in general. I think that's amazing because they, you know, Intel has been uh, the number one, you know, manufacturer in the CPU market. So I'm glad that they put in a powerful Ryzen chip again. Not as powerful as the HX series or the HS series, right? But great for a one kilogram laptop. This also has 16 gigs of DDR4, 3200 megahertz of RAM. Unfortunately, it's soldered. It also has AMD Radeon graphics. So there's no actual dedicated graphics, but because this is a 13 inch device and it's like super thin and light, I don't think it'd be reasonable to expect that. This also has 512 gigs of PCIe NVMe M.2 SSD. That was a mouthful. But it basically means that it is pretty fast storage and um, this is not soldered. Thank you, HP. It means that you can remove the old NVMe drive if you don't want it and just pop in a new one. Okay, this has a 13.3 inch display, IPS, a matte display. It goes up to 400 nits, they claim 400 nits, but actually it goes up to 500 nits, which is actually great on HP's part. And I got the Quad HD version. Personally, I don't think you need to go for the Quad HD version just because it's a 13 inch display and I don't think you'll be able to see the difference unless you're literally like, you're like this. If you are that type of person, I guess go for the Quad HD. Um, but yeah, so this also has a 100% uh, sRGB gamut. That is amazing. Most displays, most 100, 200, 300, 400, 500 dollar displays don't even have that. So I think that is a great highlight of this laptop is the display. Yes, it's not an XPS 13 with the amazing infinity edge, whatever um, display with no bezels, no chunky bezels. And because this is a relatively powerful processor for an ultrabook, you can probably do some light photo editing and know that your display is actually color accurate, which is amazing. This also is Wi-Fi 6E certified with Bluetooth 5.2. So you got all of that on board. Uh, this also comes with a 45 watt charger and it's also 45 watt hour battery. So I'll get to that a little bit later in terms of the cons. It has a 720p camera. Again, it's not the best thing in the world. It's not the worst thing in the world. It's better than most laptops uh, that cost like over a thousand dollars. And this is like $750 USD around 900 Canadian dollars. I mean, honestly, the fact that they can uh, do better than most of their competitors is just a plus in my books. Um, unfortunately, what they did with this laptop CPU is they downclocked it because they didn't want it to be too warm to the touch. And I think that was a good move on their behalf because the majority of the people who are actually buying this are not gonna be the power hungry gamers who are looking to play AAA games, you know? This is not that type of consumer. If you are, go for, look for a gaming laptop, right? So I think most business people and students would not care necessarily too much about the performance. They care more if it is quiet and um, light, essentially. And the battery, I'm just gonna say this right now, it's not 10 hours. They claim it's up to 10 hours, but what I got was around six hours on light use and maybe four hours on heavy use. 
like what I would consider Minecraft gaming, but I don't play AAA games, but I'm pretty sure on AAA games, what I've been playing with, they're like two hours. So battery, I don't know. They think they could have done better because it does not have an integrated graphics card, right? The fact that they don't have it means that they had the availability to make this Ultrabook last longer. The fact that, uh, you know, this only has a processor, RAM, and an SSD means that it doesn't draw as much power as it currently does. Another thing I really do like about this laptop, I.O. Honestly, laptop, amazing. Yes, chef's kiss. Honestly, this laptop has amazing I.O. for the, like, you know, weight class, I guess. HDMI port, USB Type-A, USB Type-C, uh, headphone jack, AC adapter, USB Type-A. I mean, you can't get much better than that on a fit and like 13 inch device. Honestly, it just makes every other manufacturer look bad. Um, especially, you know, like the XPS 13 plus or the Apple MacBook Air. Personally, I wish that they would have made this just a tiny bit thicker so that it could, uh, you know, fit a USB type A. Let me get to the negatives now. So, um, the IO is actually negative for me. One part of the IO. The USB A's, okay? So this is super thin and light, as I mentioned before. But the compromise with being thin is that it can't even fit a full USB Type A. Meaning that they had to put this flap here, which is super, like, unstable. Another problem, the power adapter, okay? So it says 45 watts, right? It's not some crazy 200 watt laptop that needs a proprietary charger where I'd understand, right? This is a very thin and light device. It does not require that much power, meaning that it could have a USB Type-C 45 watt charger in the box. This does have USB Type-C charging. Hooray! Um, I think that's great actually, but they should have included it in the box. So another negative is, unfortunately, the fingerprint scan. So as I mentioned before, this is meant for business people and students. Business people and students don't have the time or energy to think about very many things on their laptops. They generally just want it to work. So the problem with this fingerprint sensor is that it doesn't work out of the box. This fingerprint sensor needs to update its drivers. Now the average person is not gonna do that, right? So I think that's a problem on HP's behalf because you know, if this laptop came out one month ago, totally fine, it'd be totally acceptable, but it's been seven months. They should have addressed this problem. But yeah, again, if you're someone who's tech savvy or just knows a little bit about tech, you probably would know that you could update the drivers. But again, that's not the target audience here. So that's what I think is unfortunate about this laptop. Um, but yeah, that could be fixed through software. So if HP you're listening, it'd be really helpful if you solve that problem for the other consumers. Trackpad. It actually is really nice. It's really big. Glass top surface, amazing. Honestly, great job there. I only have some occasional hitches and stutters with, you know, sweaty palms. The fact that they could put such a big trackpad on a 13 inch device, really good. They're competing in almost MacBook Air laptop territory. That's a good thing. This thing right over here, that is a huge problem. They put a dedicated home page up, page down, and end right over here. Meaning that you have to shift the keyboard all the way to the left. Generally, you put your hand on the trackpad to center yourself and type from here. You, you expect the home row to be here and this is where you expect the J key, key to be on. But actually, it's in the K key. So that means that you're gonna have to uh, adjust this learning curve. The learning curve isn't huge, but if you're a business person and you're switching between laptops, that is a huge problem for you because now you have to adjust every time you get onto this laptop and it took me like a day to adjust to that. They could have just put this in the function row like every other laptop manufacturer, but they want it to be special. I don't know why they did that. I think that's a very bad move on their behalf because the speakers sound terrible. And I think one of the reasons the speakers sound terrible is because they are bottom firing. And bottom firing speakers generally don't sound as good as, you know, forward firing speakers. So speakers, the speakers on this, on this laptop is very bad. You can't hear bass at all. It's on mids and some treble. You'll be able to hear the difference between a good sounding speaker, head, a good sounding pair of headphones, a good pair of sounding laptops, like a good sounding laptop, like the XPS 13, you know, you, you'll be able to hear the difference. If you're the type of person who listens to music on their laptop, I don't know why you'd be doing that. But if you do, 
this is probably something you should consider. Also, because they're bottom firing, they kind of rely on a table to be put on, so it sounds better and more thumpy and bassier. But when you put them on your legs like an actual laptop, they sound really tinny. This is off the table. It's loud. Like in terms of lines. Table. Face here. A little bit echoey in my opinion. Hear the difference? I just think that they could have improved on the speakers, especially by moving that ridiculous ridiculous like side strip here. And I think that this laptop in general is a steal. It is seriously a steal. This laptop is amazing for its price. Um, I don't think there is literally anything else that can compete in this price point. I want to recognize that they, they made such a beautiful design on this. Um, one thing I really do appreciate and somewhat admire about this particular laptop is that um, when you lift it up, I like that it's one-handable. Like, one-handable. So it means that you can like open it up with one hand. That's something you only do with premium laptops. So I'm glad that they put this on there. That the back half lifts, lifts up for thermals. That's, that's really smart that they put this on here. Obviously, it's not groundbreaking new innovation for this particular laptop. But the fact that they put this on here is just it's great. It lifts up the keyboard just a little bit, but it allows for great, great thermals. The fans aren't whiny. They're really quiet. They, they ramp up in the beginning, but after that, they're really silent. They don't sound like an airplane taking off when you're using it. Not like a gaming laptop, obviously. Um, but yeah, they, they do a really good job in that. Um, another thing I want to talk about is the actual design, okay? So yes, this laptop has plastic on the top, okay? But the thing is, this is ocean recycled plastic. It just looks really nice. And the thing is, it's plastic covered. Below it is magnesium. You never, ever, ever see magnesium on a $750 US laptop. That is crazy. You see this on $1,000 plus laptops, Ultrabooks. Special design language just looks amazing. I mean, it's so clean. It really stands out in like a good and almost nuanced way. It, it looks better than the generic silver laptop. You know, like this Lenovo. It looks like it's meant for a business person. It looks very professional. Unfortunately, if you want to switch out the SSD, you have to take laptop bumper things off, which uh, you know interferes with your warranty. I like this clean little pavilion logo here. It just looks nice. This like little pavilion thing here. It's not something outrageous, you know? It, it looks really nice. It doesn't look cheap. For a $750 laptop, this does not feel like a $750 laptop. HP has been putting out a very good budget laptop. Of course, you're not gonna get that nice fancy HP logo you got on your NVs and your Spectres, but this is perfectly comparable. It feels great to use in the hands and uh, aside from those minor cons I put in this video, in general, this is a really, really good laptop. I can easily recommend to the majority of business uh, people and students. This is just a great laptop all around. I just wanna thank you for watching and I hope you subscribe and comment below because I will respond to every single comment. And uh, yeah, check out my other videos if you'd like to. And I hope to see you in the next video. Thank you so much for watching. See you later. Peace.